Hello, I'm Calvin Morris and I'm here today to talk to you about Doctor Who Heaven Sent. Now, this is a spoiler heavy review so if you haven't seen the episode I will be talking about story elements that will ruin the episode for you. With that being said, let's talk about the good, let's talk about the bad, the things I liked, the things I didn't. Let's review Doctor Who. So let's begin by looking at the teaser in this episode and the opening teaser is the Doctor and he's monologuing, talking about death and he's basically talking about you know how a person lives their life but death is always chasing them and he does it in a very long winded way but it's a very poetic way of talking about life and death. Um, I really like this, I, I did, I thought it was, um, I thought it was really a really good way of illustrating it and then he gets to the end and the doctor says you know I'm the doctor and I'm coming to get you and I, I I felt that's good you know because he's talking about how you can't run things and how you can't do it but then he's also talking about making a stand and that's where the, and that's the doctor you know the doctor might not want to get involved but he will always make a stand and that's what you need and we get that right at the start of the episode right of the teaser. So we get past the title sequence <clears throat> and the Doctor finds himself in this fortress and he's trying to work out where he is, what's going on and uh, how to you know, sort out the situation uh, that he's in. Now he's being chased by this creature um, we don't know what it is and but it's always hunting him and he is trying to get away from it. So he makes an escape that uh, for Doctor Who, I guess I guess you know it, it's not a bad way to escape when he throws the stool out through the window and jumps. Um, I really, really liked the whole bit when he jumped out the window. Actually, the only bit I didn't like was the aeroplane noise when he was falling. I was like, the the guy hasn't got propellers, you know? How could he possibly be making that noise? It's a little bit ridiculous. Um, in fact, it's a lot ridiculous. You know, at no point should anybody jump out of the window and go. Um, that was that was really that was a poor choice of sound effect. Um, but I also noticed as well that in in these sort of bits that there was all this sort of almost classical who music accompaniment were there as well. So that that was really nice. That was sort of like wow, we we be going back to a sort of a John Pertwee era Doctor here. And uh, that's what it felt like. It felt like a real good old fashioned Doctor Who story, whereby you weren't told anything. You that you had to watch the episodes to get clued in as to what was going on, and it didn't really reveal anything until the end. Which is one of the flaws that I had with last week's episode. For all of the things that last week's episode did, my biggest problem with the episode really was its execution in the fact that it revealed everything straight away. They, you know, they revealed that there was this hidden street, they found the street. Then they revealed who the people were in the street and what the street was. It was just like, they just played every single card straight away. In this episode, they didn't give you anything. You had to, you were guessing right the way throughout this episode as to what was going on and exactly what this place was. Um, so, and it, it, it kind of reminded me of the episode The Mind Robbers in a way, the Patrick Troughton episode. So I was getting sort of these sort of vibes coming off and going, eh, I'm not so sure this place is real. I, you know, there's, because there was also this John Pertwee uh, story in, uh, in, I believe it was a 1974 annual, where he, uh, the Doctor and Joe are trapped inside a, a psychological uh, a, a astral plane. Um, it was a weird story, but a uh, similar sort of thing. Um, but I, I felt that there were a lot of things that I, I, I liked about this episode. I liked the fact that we got a doctor that's once again afraid of dying. Hot oh, diggity! You know, I'm, I'm sick of the doctor running into a situation where somebody's pointing a gun at him and he's just like, ah, get that out of my face. You know, it's fun to play that sometimes, but I want a doctor that's scared. I, I remember the doctor being afraid, you know. I remember the Doctor when, when a Dalek would show up would, would be terrified. I remember when the Cybermen would show up. You know, remember how we used to get all those stings and 
uh, cliffhangers in the old classic series because you know you see the doctor and he'd be scared of, of something and they would cliffhanger it. This 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 feels like a real good episode of Doctor Who. Um, again, once he jumped out the window, I like the fact that the, he's instantly back inside the TARDIS and um, he's talking about how he's slowed time down. You know, we haven't really seen that illustrated really since I believe. Uh, probably the Christopher Eccleston episode, uh, End of the World. I believe that's the last time we've seen a Time Lord actually do that. Actually sort of go, right then, let's, let's, let's slow things down by making myself move, you know, faster. And, um, interestingly enough, i I actually seen a show about this as well. Uh, not Doctor Who, but about how time seems to slow down uh, when people are in a heightened situation. And if they were talking to police officers and they were saying, you know, when they were in a gunfight, there was this one cop who, who said that he had, you know, he could see, you know, um, uh, as he was moving through uh, the area, he could see this object and as he, as, as he looked, he could read the word coke on, on the side of it and it was a coke can that somebody had thrown. And um, so I, I like the fact that they, they, they're actually basing this on some sort of not fact, but um, uh, some sort of idea that is floating around that when you're in a heightened situation, your brain works faster. I, I, I like that a lot. Um, I liked the uh, fort as well. I thought the fort was a, a pretty decent design. Um, the CG wasn't bad. It wasn't awful. Uh, it wasn't fantastic, but it wasn't bad. For what it was, it, it, it really served the purpose and worked well with the story. Um, I, I, again, I like the locations that they chose. There's nothing wrong with the locations that they chose. I thought they they, they looked really, really good for what it was. And um, and <coughs> um, also, I like the fact that uh, we got a Doctor Who episode that was an unfolding mystery. That really did, you know, sort of take us and take us on a journey and take us through the episode. And didn't we didn't find out what it was right until the end until we were finally all the pieces came together and we went, ah, right, that's what it is, right, okay, I'm with you. I, I loved that with this episode. I thought this episode done a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant job. Not perfect, though. There, there are some minor faults. Um, for example, yeah, I didn't like the aeroplane noise with the Doctor. I thought that was, that was silly. And um, also, I didn't like the fact that the Doctor is able to talk a door open. That he's able to sympathise with a door. I mean, you've got all this good stuff going on in this episode. You've got all this great stuff, and then you've got to have a doctor be sympathetic to a door. I thought that was just like, no, why would you do that? This is a really good episode. This is this is actually kind of creepy and kind of scary, and it's it's got a lot of the. Um, a, a, a lot of the stereotypical things that you'd expect to see in like a horror or something like that whereby you've got this person who's continually being pursued uh, by death and you've got all these you know you've got pestilence and all that sort of stuff and you've got you've got these flies going around and you've you've got all this sort of really good real stuff um and and then you've got to have him you know stroke a door and say ah oh, there there it's it's not it's not it's not a puppy. Um, the other thing that I thought was a little bit wrong in this episode, well, not wrong, but that I I wasn't really sort of keen on was the level at which they'd color graded this episode. Um, it was just like you know, damn, is is there any other color in this episode other than amber? I mean, uh, it 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 just. It didn't look great. I'm I'm sorry. Okay, I know it's nitpicking, but to me, you know, everything was a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe you know that's what they were going for. That they wanted to make you feel slightly uncomfortable. But um, to see that all the time, it it was like you know there are the colours, and you don't have to be as harsh with it. But you know, not not awful. Um, and the only thing else that I really found that was a bit silly in this episode was the amount of times that the Doctor ended up coming back. Um, it was like, you know, how, how long had he been there? You know, and it was, you know, something stupid, like over a billion years. 
uh, trapped inside and and um, he had to keep going through it and through it and through it and through it through it. You know, how long had he been in was he spending in the fort each time he was there? What, a week maybe? Before he had to do it. So how many times did he died? Well that just makes him seem stupid. I mean, he had access to a shovel and he didn't think once about picking up that shovel and twatting death in the face with it. Um you just would, wouldn't you? I mean you've got a shovel in your hand, you know. Oh, have that you bastard, you know? Um it just, he just kept going through the same manoeuvres over and over and over and it, to me it just made him seem less intelligent or more single minded, I mean it, it depends, less versatile let's say. So, um, so I wasn't really keen on that but that being said, this was a marked improvement over the, the, the last few shows that we'd had. In fact, as I said, this was the best episode that we've had since Listen, which I believe is still the best Peter Capaldi episode made so far. Um, how does this episode rank? Well, we'll have to see the conclusion to this episode as well. This is a part, uh, the middle part of a three-parter, so you've got to see the conclusion to really you know, know how this story fits. But what I can say for sure is that it is better than last week's episode, which was better than the week before's episode. So this episode is really sort of stepping up its game, and um, and I liked it a hell of a lot. I've got to say, look, I'm going to take points off because of the things I didn't like. Like I said, the colour grading, the silly noise effects, those damn sonic glasses. I'm, 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 I'm not going to get over it, okay? Those glasses are stupid. Stop doing it. Um, and again, I, the amount of time you spend that, so I'm going to take points off for that, however... However, this episode is an 8.5. I really like this. This had such a good flavour to it that it had, it had such a nice feel of the Pertwee era and the uh, Troughton era Doctor that it was actually trying to tell an intelligent story, that it was it actually flowed, it actually fitted well together. Um, I, I, you know, the start to finish, but all the reveals were done in the right order, so that it was, it was still a mystery right up until the end. But when it all fits together, you go, all makes sense, great, well done. Um, and again, this episode was written by Stephen Moffat. So, um, for all those people out there, okay, this is where I stand with Stephen Moffat. Okay, I believe Stephen Moffat is a great writer. I do. Okay, and you will never hear me say that Stephen Moffat is not a great writer. However, Stephen Moffat is not a good showrunner. That's pure and simple. Just because you can write a damn good story does not mean to say that you can make a show work. That's a totally different job. Okay, that is completely different. Um, and, I, and I will stick by that. I think he is a great writer. I think when you've got somebody over the top of him that can edit him, that can take it, tell him to take it back and redo it, that can actually give him, you know, some points here and there and say, no, this is wrong, this is inconsistent, stop doing this, this is a little bit bad. You end up with a really good story. You know, take a look at, you know, The Empty Child, you know, The Girl in the Fireplace, um, Blink. You know, they're all great stories, all written by Stephen Moffat, but he's always had somebody over the top of him editing it. Now, just because he's a really good writer that does not make him a good showrunner, and that's the end of it. I think he's a terrible showrunner, and I think last season and this season has proved that he is just not with it. That he, he, cannot, he cannot make a consistent show. He can't make it a, a, a produce everything at the same level all the time. And, you know, we're not asking him to produce Doctor Who's that smash it all the time and blow our minds, and it, you know, but we are expecting him to produce something that stays at a consistent level, you know. It would be nice if we had a nice whole even run of Doctor Who where, where we didn't have episodes that totally sucked. Um, but this episode, I've got to say, uh, this was much more like it, man. Give us ep more episodes like this. More episodes where, where it's a little bit creepier, a little bit scarier. Where we're not sure what was happening, that where we have to unravel it, where we get swept along by it. You know, the musical score in this was fantastic. I thought it was really, really well done. I, 
you know, like I said, if it weren't for the fact that I had those things to nitpick out of it, this should be getting a much higher rating from me. I'm not going to give it a 10 out of 10, like I said, it's an 8.5, but an 8.5 compared to last week and the week before is a smash hit. So that's the way, what I think about this episode. Tell me, what do you think of this episode? And uh, what do you think of a Clara absent, almost a Clara absent episode? Because um, she was still in it, and for, even though she's dead, she's still in the show. I mean, go figure. But uh, let me know in the comments down below what you thought of this episode. Uh, also, feel free to like and subscribe to this channel, or you can go over and join me on Google+. But until next time, I'll see you later, guys.